Hey there, God bless you. Thanks for checking out this video. Today I want to talk to you about spiritual giftings, what they are, and kind of things that can get in the way of us using them the way that we're called to, and how to remove those roadblocks so that we can be the best that we can be for God and the people he's called us to serve. So I'm going to start off a little anecdotally. I am a writer, I'm a novelist in my free time, and I have known for about four-ish years now that this isn't just something that is a hobby for me. It's not something that is separate from my spiritual walk. This is something that God has called me to do to move his messages into the secular world of writing. So this came to mind for me about four years ago. Um, in 2017, I had a couple of new mentors come into my life who introduced me to the concept of gifts from God that are meant to serve people and bring them into the kingdom that aren't what you would normally think of like preaching from a pulpit or being a praise and worship band leader or an evangelist. So for me, that was realizing that, oh my gosh, the writing that I have loved to do my whole life is actually a gift from God that allows me to serve people. Once I realized this, like really came face to face with it, it totally changed my world and opened my eyes to what I was called to do both on and off my job and how to do it best. So at that point, I started wholeheartedly dedicating everything that I wrote to God and saying, whatever you need me to do, however you need me to do it, you lead, I'll follow. So for a while, it was sunshine and rainbows. I had a really awesome couple of years where I felt like God was laying story after story on my heart and I was just blazing through them. And even when I had really bad writer's block or I had a lot of doubt and things like that, he always pulled me through. And of course he did because he's faithful like that. However, something happened in early 2020, um, to give just a little bit more backstory on it, I had published my first novel about a year before and then published my second novel, which was the beginning of a series that I really strongly felt that God had laid on my heart that was going to reach people and um, introduce some king what I call kingdom concepts or um, truths from God's word without saying chapter and verse. And I felt like God's hand was in this. He'd been leading me through, okay, this is the first book you're going to publish. Then you're going to publish this series. It really meant a lot to me. And I just saw him opening all of these doors and I was meeting tons of really cool people that were helping me with my publishing business. It was spectacular. But then something shifted about a month after I published the first book in that series. My, what I call my divine spark, which is my way of saying that sort of connection where I feel like I'm getting a direct download from God and he's telling me, you know, do this, write this, reach out to this person. It was like it went away. And for all of 2020, I struggled. I couldn't get a single new story idea to stick. Um, I would start a, a, a new novel and within a couple of chapters, a few days of writing, I would just feel so much doubt and hesitancy and, and like, this isn't some, this isn't the story God wants me to write. What am I doing? I have no idea where I'm going and I would drop the project. Now we all know 2020 was a bit of an exceptional year. Um, and it was more so for me even than a lot of the people I knew because I found out that um, my husband and I were expecting our first child. It was a lot that went on in that year. So I sort of wrote it off as well. I just had a rough year, like everybody had a rough year. It was 2020, don't put a lot of expectations on yourself, etc. I did manage to write one novel that year and it was not like my other novels. Um, I It was a lot darker, it dealt with a lot grimmer stuff, there was a lot more vengeance and, and fighting and infighting and broken marriages and just things that I normally wouldn't write about and have never felt that God was really telling me to write about. Not only that, but I felt like the way I approached it wasn't the most godly way either. So I didn't show it to anybody, I finished it, I put it on a shelf, and I just didn't think about it for a while. About eh, two to three months after I finished it, I saw a wonderful course by a Christian brother um, who was, he was teaching about giftings. He actually did a couple courses back to back. Um, one was about giftings and then one was about what we're supposed to do with those giftings. And in watching these, I came face to face with the fact that 
in the record of, I believe it's, I'm going to say it's Matthew. I'm not always the best with chapter and verse, but I believe it's in the book of Matthew. There's a place where Jesus talks about in a parable, three servants who are given talents, uh, which is a, was a certain amount of money, certain measurement of money. And they were given these talents and they were told to do something with them while their master who gave them the talents was away. And I'd heard this taught, um, in this regard a couple of times by um, people that I really admire who opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, talent, yes, it was a measure of currency. It's also a word that we in our modern vernacular use for a gifting. So I have a talent for writing. My brother has a talent for music as well as my, my dad does as well. My mom has a talent for art as does my husband. So the subject of talents specifically is very close to my heart and it opened up this idea which was then expounded on in these courses that I was watching that we're to have we were to have we have talents we're to take these talents we have and we're to multiply them this is what the servants in the parable did who were called good and faithful servants they took the talent or in that that case of the parable the money that their master had given them and they made a profit from it. The one who's called a wicked and lazy servant was someone who took the talent he had and buried it in the ground. So in this course that I was watching, this pastor um, was talking about how the purpose of our gift is not just God gives us a gift and we sit on it. It's that God gives us a gift and we take it and we multiply the gift. And throughout this course, he walked through all these examples of times where he and people he knew and people in his church had gone and taken these God-given gifts and they created multiplication with it. So multiplication could look like bringing more people into the body of Christ. It can look like an increase if you're gifted in specifically in giving to be able to increase in the amount that you can give or you know if you're talented in writing increasing in not just the amount of things that you're writing but the people that you're reaching and the impact it's having well that stopped me cold because i realized the weight that i was feeling that i had been feeling throughout 2020 was the fact that i was not multiplying my gift i was putting out books i put out two books in 2020 the next two consecutive books uh, in that series that i had published the first one in 2019 but I was not feeling like I, there was multiplication. It sort of felt like if you threw a stone into a pond and there were no ripples, that was a bit how it felt. There would be, you know, oh, the excitement of, of release day or, you know, people might get a little bit hyped up when, you know, I would announce something like a cover reveal or a synopsis. And then it just sort of felt like it didn't have all that much impact, at least not the way that I felt like God had told me, if you take these steps, this is the increase that it will bring. Not increase for myself, but increase for the kingdom. I've just felt like, wow, I'm not reaching the people that I should. I'm not having the amount of outreach. I'm not able to touch people's hearts the way that I want to, or at least I'm not able to get out of my own way enough to do it. So I went into a couple days of fervent prayer. Um, as I was describing it to my family, it was the kind of prayer where you pray so hard your head hurts and you really connect with that verse where it says, you know, Jesus prayed so hard that his sweat was like drops of blood. I felt like I was starting to get that. What God revealed to me after two days of serious, fervent prayer was that in launching a different arm of my publishing business, I had unwittingly compromised on a promise I made to God about the kind of content that I was willing to edit, the kind of things that I was willing to sort of let into my personal space and into my head as an editor, I had dropped the ball on that. I had accepted some editing jobs that dealt with content that was very dark and I was not guarding my boundaries and there was a systemic outflow of just that darkness that I had taken in started to affect my writing. It started to affect the other things I was allowing myself to edit. It was like one compromise led to another compromise led to another compromise. And then when I looked at that manuscript that I had written that I just, it didn't feel like me, I realized it didn't feel like me, but it felt like a lot of the things that I had edited for clients over the course of the year. And so what all of this brought to my mind and what I really want to talk about to you is our gifts from God 
they can be compromised if we let them in the sense that we can allow other things to step in the way that put a guise between us and what God wants us to do. And I firmly believe from my own experience now that it can impact the blessing of the gift that God has given us. In my case, I firmly believe that I wasn't seeing the multiplication that I had believed I would see from God and that I felt like he was leading me toward because I decided to compromise and decided I would rather get a paycheck from a client for editing a book that was the kind of content I told God I would not build my platform on and I promised and made a covenant with him, I'm not going to let this stuff into my platform. I decided I would rather have a client's money than God's provision, than God's blessing. And I continued to compromise throughout that year simply because people would ask me, I was terrible at saying no. I would say yes, I would edit these darker manuscripts. I would feel terrible while I was editing them and after I was editing them. And yet I thought, well, this is what I have to do in order to make my gift multiply because how am I going to pay for my publishing business if I don't have editing clients? How am I going to have the money to do what I want to do with my books if I am not making the money? And how am I going to make the money if I'm telling clients no and turning them away because their subject material is something that I promised God I wasn't going to build my platform on. You can kind of see the way this is going, right? So what I want to encourage you is the gifting that you have from God, whether it's ministerial in the sense of working within the church, whether it's secular in the sense of maybe God has called you to be a musician who does music that's not specifically coined Christian music. It's not Shane and Shane, Bethel music, that kind of thing. If you have been given a gift from God, the increase and the multiplication, it has to come through him. This was something clearly it took me a while to figure this out. The thing is, you can see a sense of multiplication or a sense of getting through to people and and seeing, you know, your records go out, your books get published. Um, you know, you can still have opportunities to volunteer at certain places, things like that, if that's your calling. But if it's not coming from God, even though the law of the harvest is the same, that if you plant, if you sow, you will reap, you're probably not reaping to the extent that God wants you to or in the ways God wants you to if you're willing to compromise on your gift, compromise on your boundaries to use your gift to get that increase. So what this meant for me was, although I stepped away from my editing services for a while for maternity leave, and that's, that's my plan, going forward for a little bit is stepping away from that. I realize that when I come back to it, I have to be firmer about my boundaries. I have to be less concerned about offending people by saying no to the darker material in their manuscripts. I have to be less worried about offending them and more worried about offending God. I also had to take that manuscript that I had written that had that dark content, sort of the darkness in, darkness out, I had to take that manuscript and delete it. That was a whole month and a half worth of work, which for me is a little longer than usual because I draft quickly. It hurt a little bit too because that was the only thing that I wrote and managed to finish brand new in 2020. But God told me very clearly during those prayer sessions that this isn't something you can fix. This is systemic. You have to get this out. Specifically, the way I heard him speak it to me was, there is darkness that you let into your home, there's darkness that you let into your head. And I realized that this was darkness I had let into my head. And the only way to get it out was to get it out. So if you have felt like I was feeling through most of 2020 that God has a calling on my life, God's given me a gift. Why am I not seeing the harvest of it? Why am I not seeing the multiplication of it? Why do I feel like God called me to this point and then at this point it just stopped and it's not hitting me anymore. It's not having the impact anymore. I feel like I'm separated from God, like his voice isn't in the mix anymore, like I'm not receiving my marching orders from him. I encourage you to enter into fervent prayer, to look back over the course of how you've used your gift and ask yourself, is there a place that I compromised? 
Is there a place where I stopped relying on God to bring the increase and I saw an opportunity that I thought would bring the increase, but maybe it's brought me a little bit more hardship, a lot more hardship, a lot of depression, a lot of questioning, a lot of, am I even doing the right thing? Am I even gifted like this? Has my divine spark gone out? Uh, has my ability gone rote? If you've asked yourself these kinds of questions, I highly, highly encourage you to enter into prayer and ask God to show you, is there a place where I compromised? Is there a place where I sold my gift to the highest bidder? Is there a place where I began to rely on my human understanding of what I needed to do to succeed instead of trusting in you, God, to bring the people to me, to bring the opportunities, to open the right doors so I'm not walking through the wrong ones? I really hope that this has helped you. I know it's not an easy subject. It certainly was not easy for me when I realized how much I had compromised. I felt a lot of guilt. I felt a lot of shame. I realized I broke a promise to the Almighty God. And within a year of starting my publishing, less than a year of starting the publishing business that I dedicated to him, I had already compromised so severely that I felt that disconnect from him as if my gift had gone cold. But the good news is that I want to close on the moment I said, this is not too hard. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this darkness cleansed out. When I repented, when I spoke against any kind of spiritual weight that had come on from letting that darker content into my head, the weight lifted. I was immediately, my mood improved to better than it had been in an entire year. I went and did as I promised God, I deleted that manuscript completely off of my computer. I took out bits and kernels of darkness in the series that I felt he had given me to publish to bring those kingdom messages to the world. Went ahead, took all of that out, even at the parts where I was like, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to make this have the same impact that I felt it had in the original. I felt God say, it's, I will give you the words. It is fine. I will give you the right words to speak it. And he did. I made those changes and I felt an overwhelming amount of peace. And that is the message that I want to leave you with is even if you feel, or even if you know, even if you're realizing now as you listen to this, that you compromised somewhere on your gift, that you let something in that you shouldn't have, that you decided to take the easy way out, your gift is not dead. Your fire has not gone out. Your divine spark is not dimmed forever. You can still be a light to the world. That's what you have been called to do. That is what Jesus calls us. And each of us, our light burns a little different. If you feel like your light has dimmed because of choices you've made, compromises you've made, it is not too late to enter into fervent prayer, to ask God to show you where things went a little sideways or a lot sideways like it was in my case. Ask him to forgive you, enter into deep repentance, enter into deep prayer, and then commit your heart to taking the necessary steps to cleanse your gifting, to get the kernels of darkness out that you've let in and ask God to help you be stronger next time because the challenges will come. The temptation will come to compromise, to take the easy way, to rely on your human understanding of how you're going to get from point A to point B, how you're going to get the harvest. But just remember, God is the one who brings the increase. God is the source of your gift and God wants to see you thrive in it. So when you get to that place in your mind where you realize it's time for a change, know that the very first place to go, don't go back into leaning on your human understanding of how you have to solve it. Go straight to him. Ask him to show you the right way. He will lead you there. Your divine spark, you will feel that again. You will reconnect with God. It is not too late. It's not too late to reconnect with him. It's not too late to use your gift and it's not too late to change the world. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and commenting on this video. And please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. And if you'd like to consider donating to help with making videos like this, please go to truthortradition.com 
front slash donate. God bless you.